I have a three points uh, from this long text. Uh, let's see who is Christ and what he's uh, uh, bringing, what he's uh, offering. The first thing what we can see from the verse uh, 13, that Jesus is in Capernaum, Capernaum, and he's walking around and he see the tax collector. And this tax collector was sitting there on the booth on his in his office outside, and that was a very important uh, road toward Damascus, toward Egypt, toward Mediterranean, and there was a lot of people who were doing a trade, and it was a very important for Roman people to have a taxes paid there because they could point uh, 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 different uh, uh, taxes. And the tax, uh, how the Roman Empire in those times were working, they usually choose a person from that nation, who will, uh, because of the greed spirit, <laughs> uh, because of the money, they will uh, put a pressure on the local population. These people, tax collectors, have a protection of Roman army, and they were entering even in the houses of the people and, uh, and putting a pressure to, to take that taxes, to which Roman Empire was uh, using for supporting the army or supporting the other activities, including building the, uh, up the pagan God, uh, temples which for the Jewish people in those times, that was a, a big, big problem. And usually they found the people who will be like, a, uh, who will forget who they are and who will just for the personal benefit uh, betray their nation. And the tax collector in those times were like uh, in the same category of the, of the big sinners, evil people, who because of their personal gain and status and position, they, they forgot their nation. And in the, in the hardships during the, of, the, of their nations, they are earning money. And sometimes also here we have a lot of people who were prof, uh, how do you say, profitary, uh, profit uh, people who profit make profit on the edge, uh, uh, on the on the back of the suffering of their own nation. And uh, these people, uh, they were collecting taxes from the uh, people. There was two kinds of the the taxes. And they have in a, in a Hebrew uh, in a, in in our language. They I found some word like uh, gavai, uh, like that was like a text. And I was rem rem reminding myself in a Serbian language is like davai, <laughs> give, <laughs> you know, like. And they were like a charging people for everything. Like you, there was a, a, a normal tax for everybody who is uh, older than twelve years old or fourteen years old. Then the tax taxed people if they uh, produce some fruit or do, did some business. And they were taxing people as well. If you're coming in a marketplace, they were checking how many wheels on your, uh, uh, how to say, like a car. <laughs> like if you have a, a, a like a, a tr uh, trailer with the two wheels, then you pay uh, two times tax. If you have four, you pay four. So they were uh, uh, very creative how to put the pressure on people to pay those taxes. And local people didn't like these local people who became a tax collectors. Being a tax collector in those times was a, was was evil vocation. It was like a, a organized crime, a corruption on a high level. And uh, and uh, you remember there are a few stories of the of the tax collectors in a, in the New Testament. But one uh, very important thing to understand there was a two two hierarchy of the tax people. One is who was sitting on a on the street and controlling who is paying what. And there was the higher tax people, like Zacchaeus from Gospel of Luke, uh, chapter 19, who was the higher, he was like a director of the tax office. And those people were very rich. They live in, a, they have a big house on a hill, and uh, you, you couldn't approach uh, to these people. But uh, uh, Levi, or later Matthew, was a tax collector. And usually uh, people didn't like them. That was like, uh, they put them in the same box, and Mishnah mentioned that in the same box with the gamblers, alcoholic people, prostitutes, and tax collectors. That was like a, like a very bad, bad, bad uh, vocation. But we see here, Jesus called him to follow him. Jesus called four uh, disciples, and now he, this is the fifth one. He said, come and follow me. It was a big scandal. Who is this rabbi who is calling the tax collector? To, to be in his uh, uh, school of uh, teaching of theology. There was like a scandal. And we can see the text say that Matthew immediately left in Gospel of Luke, 
say that Levi, or uh, later g g he changed the name, Matthew, which means a gift from God, uh, uh, he immediately left everything. And in those, in those times, if you leave that kind of job, there is no way you come back to, to, to get the job back. You cannot come. If you leave that kind of job, the other people who are sitting on the benches who have said, oh, <laughs> I am the next one <laughs> in, uh, in, in HR of the Roman Empire. But what happened to Matthew that he left uh, like immediately? Most likely, he was listening to Jesus' sermons. Most likely, he saw Jesus' miracles. Some people say that most likely, because Jesus had a private business as a carpenter, maybe he <laughs> gave him a taxes, <laughs> and he knew, he knew Jesus from that area as well. But Matthew responded to Jesus' invitation, most likely because he was not fulfilled, most likely he was not happy, most likely the big money and good job didn't fulfill his emptiness into the heart. And most likely, when he heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, what Jesus is offering, he said, this is what I need. This is the good news of what I need. And I'm ready to leave everything. And can you imagine, like, in the next day, in a newspaper, say, Matthew left his job <laughs> for some <laughs> carpenter <laughs> to follow him. It was like a big news. And not only that big news, he, uh, we can see that he created, he immediately invited people for a dinner or party. And there was a good evangelistic approach. He invited his friends and the, the text said that his friends there was only tax collectors because usually nobody wanted to be a friend with the tax collectors and tax collectors had only friends who are tax collectors and you can imagine uh, uh, that matthew is, uh, is is receiving guests in his house party and say hey hi how are you hey matthew is that uh, we heard that you just give uh, you left your job he said, yes, yes, I left the job. <laughs> he said, because of why? He said, because of Jesus. He's here. Come, come, come. Come to listen to him. You, I, I can feel the atmosphere in the house that he's happy to introduce his friend to the Jesus and the Jesus can share the good news with them. Amen? And it's a wonderful picture about evangelism. We should do like that in our houses. We should invite people and tell them, where we found the meaning of life, fulfillment, and the purpose of life. Matthew left his job to follow Jesus, and he invited his friends to meet Jesus, who gave him a hope, meaning, and forgiveness. Amen? That, that, that is evangelism, introducing other people to Jesus, not to the religion, not to the denomination, church, and, and synagogue. He invited them in direct relationship with Jesus. Jesus always invited people to him. He said, come to me, Matthew 11, uh, 8, uh, Matthew 11 28, 30. Come to me, all, all, all of you who are heavy burden, and I will give you rest. He invited people to himself. And, and, and this picture that Jesus is inviting uh, the biggest sinner of the city to follow him, this picture that Jesus is sitting with, the, with the, 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 the hardest and the worst people and tell them about gospel, it's a beautiful illustration who God is. God is love. God loves everyone. There is no hard case for God. And this is somebody called scandal of grace. <laughs> scandal of grace. Jesus came to tell them, to love them, to point them that, uh, to, 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 to the forgiveness and to the real meaning of life. And I can imagine, I was thinking when I was yesterday, I was uh, like, how I will react if, if I was there. You know, how I will react if some, some evangelist or somebody is talking to people, to the, to the corrupted business people, politicians, gamblers, <laughs> uh, drug dealers, and is, that I found some Christian sitting there uh, with them and, and speaking with them. Everybody would say, hey, what are you doing right here? You are going in ICF. You should, not, uh, <laughs> you should not mingle with these people. But Jesus was there because he loved them. Amen? People, these people uh, need to hear the gospel because these religious people, they didn't want to mix with them. They were hating them. They were pointing on them. They're putting them in a different box that there is no salvation or, or hope for them. And, and these religious teachers were coming there and they were shocked. They saw Jesus and apostles. They're talking with these tax collectors and they are shocked. They said, they said, um, like, how, how, when the teachers of the law who were Pharisees saw him eating with the sinners and tax collectors, they asked his disciples, 
Why does he eat with the tax collectors and sinners? Eating in the Middle East was like a fellowship. Eating meal, sharing meal was like building a friendship. Uh, it was an important, uh, important thing. On hearing that, Jesus said to them, It's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. Jesus said, you didn't understand my mission. I came to help people who are in problem. And Jesus Christ is the doctor who can bring the cure. But these Pharisees, these religious people, they said, we are okay. We don't have any problem. We don't need the help. We will do, we will find our way, in, our way to God. And that was blindness for them. And Jesus uh, uh, in an, another text, he said he was sometimes angry when they see how they were blind by their uh, uh, religiosity. Uh, Christ is the doctor who came to bring the cure for our sins. Christ can forgive your sins. Christ can give you a meaning of life. Christ can, can restore you and give you the new fresh. Romans 5.8, the Paul said, but God demonstrate his own love for us. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Christ didn't say, hey guys, can you change a little bit yourself? And then I will love you. <laughs> I will save you. We were hopeless. We were like in a, uh, in a, in a we couldn't reach God. We, uh, the Bible said that our righteousness in the front of God's eyes is like a dirty ga garment. And, and, and we could not help ourselves. Uh, and that's the reason why God loved came through Jesus Christ here to help us. Uh, while all religions are talking do, do, or do not do, or do some rules to reach God, and we can never reach God with, the, with reach his standards, but God reached us. God became a man because of you and me to give us forgiveness, to give us eternal life, only if we accept that and believe in him. Amen. And, and, and in, his, in Isaiah 61, uh, one, uh, the, the prophet is pronouncing what will be the Jesus uh, role and ministry. He said, the spirit of the sovereign God is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He, poor. he sent me to bind the broken heart, to proclaim the freedom to the captives and release them from the darkness for the prisoners. God is releasing people from the darkness to the light. He is giving us a freedom. And that is the good news of Jesus Christ. And uh, there is no hard case. And maybe that was a scandal in the newspaper in those times, like that Jesus called Matthew, that Jesus spent time with the, with the, with the worst people there. But because he is love, and he, in the Gospel of Luke, he said he is the friend of sinners. There is no better friend for one sinner, and all of us, we are sinners, than Jesus Christ. Accept his offer. Accept his invitation. He is calling you this morning. Follow me. And don't think, are you a big sinner or not? Just come to him as you are. He died for you while you were a sinner. And then accept his grace and his offer. Amen? And that was like a shock. This Matthew wrote the gospel, one of the good gospel biogra biography of Jesus. And, and he left everything. The, also, there is a story of Zacchaeus in, a, in the gospel. There is also a story of the uh, tax collector who was praying in a temple as well. Jesus, he used the picture of tax collectors that God loves everyone. And God is giving, uh, giving a chance to everyone. Sometimes we just pointed, aha, uh -huh, this is a good guy. We want to hang around with good people. When sometimes God sends us people who are in the problems, homeless people, people who are on the edge of criminal and corruption, they need God as well. Amen? They need God as well. As a good, rich professors, <laughs> managers, uh, uh, everybody needs God. But Jesus was here and these religious teachers were in shock. Also, then... In the second point of this text uh, uh, of the, my sermon, we can see that Jesus is creating something new. The, the, the people of the religion, of the uh, Ju 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 Israel religion, they uh, didn't just follow Old Testament. They created their own rules. They have 615 special rules, man-made rules. And Jesus challenged them one time. They said, because of your rules, you are canceling the word of God. 
those rules that they created later, this tradition, human tradition, were most of them in a collision with the word of God. But they were focused on that small rules tradition, rather what is the main point what God told them in Old Testament. And that's the reason why they were st st not only Jesus, but they were, they, they were like uh, Jesus told to them, you are, you are, you are, you are watching mosquitoes, studying mosquitoes, but you are missing the camel, you're missing the point. You want to just uh, uh, clean the glass outside, but not inside. And there was always debate and, and discussion that Jesus told them, it's not how you show up yourself in front of people, it's how you receive transformation inside out, inside out, and only God can do that. Uh, second point, Christ, Christ is bringing a new wine and in wineskins, and, uh, and they, they're asking now the, the apostles in a, in a, for the verse 19, he said, how, uh, uh, he said, why your, your, your uh, disciples are not fasting? And we can see in the Old Testament that God proposed only one time in a year to fast. Then later people start to fast more, and eventually Pharisees said, okay, uh, we need to fast two times per week, Monday and Thursday. And we don't have that in Old Testament, but they added that. And, and Bible is encouraging us to fast and prayer. Fast without prayer is diet. <laughs> you, we need to fast and we need to pray. And we can see that people uh, in those times, and Jesus uh, encouraged them to fast. He said, at the moment, they are like on a wedding. The groom is with them. They, are, they need to be joyful. And, uh, and, and these religious people, they wanted people to be sad all the time, not to be like joyful. And then when they saw that Jesus is talking about God, but in a joyful way, they said, oh, something is wrong here. You're, you're laughing too much. You're, you're joyful too much. You should be sad. And Jesus said, wait, 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 wait. It's, it's a wedding. The king is here. The kingdom of God is here. Messiah is here, and now they need to be joyful. We need to celebrate because God is saving the world. Later they will fast when the groom is not anymore with, with them. So they didn't understand what is the point of the, uh, of the fasting, and they understood and took that uh, uh, to attack people, including to attack uh, uh, Jesus, Jesus Christ. In Old Testament, there is a lot of prophecies that God will create something new. When Messiah will come, uh, when the, God will give a new covenant, God will give you a new heart, new spirit. There is a lot of Bible verses in the Old Testament. But uh, they couldn't understand. They wanted Jesus to, 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 they want to put Jesus in the box of their religiosity. They want to put Jesus in their religion, to fix a little bit the Judaism, and that's it. They didn't understand that Christ came here as a king to fulfill the Old Testament and to create a New Testament, to create something new, to create opportunity that people can have direct relationship with, with God. And also, uh, 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 he, he is talking to them about new wine in the wineskins. He basically wants to say, because the wine is fermentizing and the wineskin is getting st stretcher and stretcher, and they stretch too much what God gave them through Old Testament <laughs> with the rules and regulations and say, what I'm talking now, you cannot put in your box. I'm creating something new. New wine needs to happen in the new, um, put in wineskins. And this is the new relationship with God through Jesus Christ based on Christ's righteousness, not on our religiosity and righteousness. C following Christ is, being a Christian, it means following Christ. Being a Christian means having relationship with Christ. It's not about religion. It's not about rules. The rules that God gave us, Holy Spirit, to, give, to have a strength to, command, to keep the commands that God wanted to us. But all religions are talking about do, 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 or do not do, do not do, do not do, and never will be enough. You will never reach the high standards of God. And what Christ is offering is something new. It's done. It's paid. I did everything. You just need to, to believe and to accept that. This is this new wine in, in the wineskins. After fasting, they were attacking him about uh, uh, Sabbath. In Sabbath, uh, keeping the Sabbath, God intended for people to rest spiritually, mentally, physically, to be close to God. But 
Jewish people were, were ex experts how they created the much more. They have a 39 special regulations for the Sabbath. How many steps you can walk, what you need to do, how you are walking, what you have in pocket. If you have in pocket more than this, something metal, that's work. You cannot make mud on Sunday uh, to work. A lot of strict regulations what you cannot do on, on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on the Sabbath. Even today, in some Jewish community, uh, some neighbors told me, some friends told me that the, the Jewish neighbor called them, can you turn off the light? <laughs> because uh, turning off the light is, they're thinking this is like uh, also the work. And they miss the point with these uh, blind, st strict regulations, made-made regulations. And that was like a catastrophe for them to see Jesus is walking with apostles from the, uh, in, in, from the verse uh, 23. Then the apostles were taking the food to prepare the food on Saturday. Then Jesus wanted to help to heal the man on a Sabbath. They said, wait a minute, wait a minute. You should not do this. You should not do this. And then Jesus is challenging them. He said, have you ever read in the Bible? Which is very interesting with these Pharisees and religious people. He, Jesus always pointed to the Bible. <laughs> You know, uh, he's like, hey, have you ever read the Bible? He's returning back to the, to, the, to the essence. And that's very important to understand that. Because sometimes in all Christian traditions, we have some rules and regulations. Man-made regulations, which became more important than the essence. I remember when, when, I, when, when, uh, when I became a Christian in the church, we had some American missionaries. They left after, because the war started in the 90s and then... Uh, I remember first Sunday when we wanted to change something. And I said, okay, we, are, we usually used to sit down and pray. Can we now pray when we, the, to stand up? And that was immediately like, no, 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 no. This is not. I said, why? I said, the missionaries teach us to sit down and pray. <laughs> like, and I said, why we cannot change this? Oh, no, 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 no. This is like we need to keep that regulations. And sometimes we have some non-essential things which are blind us that we don't see the important the important thing jesus is challenging them here and 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 he even he said he was angry in the spirit uh, he was angry because they were they, they were blindfolded with their religiosity with the rules and uh and uh, what Jesus wanted to tell them it say like hey guys you don't understand the sabbath is created for men not men for the sabbath and the Son of Man is the Lord of Sabbath. And it was a very strong statement. He basically wanted to say, guys, I'm the God, the Son, who was a part of creation. <laughs> I created the Sabbath. You know, you, and, and, and how he's pointed on David in Old Testament, what David did on the Sabbath. Uh, uh, Jesus is a new David, uh, son of David, who is also creating something, something new here. And, and they were so blinded that even he took the sick man, he told them, can I do a good thing to heal this man on Sabbath? Or I should do the evil thing. He's challenging them also in the Gospel of Luke. He said, you're not working on Sabbath, but if your animal end up into the well, you will take it out because this animal you need for your business. <laughs> they even didn't keep the, their regulations, uh, which were accusing people for, uh, not, for not doing. And that was catastrophe and, and and jesus was very sad he was uh, disrupted in his heart when he saw the hypocrisy and and the, they were blinded by their by their uh, regulations and uh, and uh, and uh, and their man-made rules there is a joke the buddhist the hindus and the jewish they were sharing their life stories and the buddhist said Usually, where is a chaos around around me, I go meditate, then I got some peace in. There is a chaos around me, but I have some peace in heart. The Hindu, he said, also when there is a chaos around myself, uh, uh, I just meditate, think, uh, and then I got somehow some peace around myself. Chaos around myself, I have a peace. And then Jewish guy, he said, one time happened. There was a Sabbath, and I was walking a little bit, which was allowed, and I saw the big bag. I opened the bag, there was a $2 million. <laughs> and I wanted to take the bag to take home, but it's a Sabbath. I cannot carry the bag. It's work. I wanted to take the bag, but there is a Sabbath. He said, there is all Sabbath around myself, but in my heart, Thursday. 
<laughs> so we all have sometimes some rules, and but when that rules needs to fit our interests, we are easy how to justify them and how to change them and say what we can do, what we cannot do. These religious people, they accuse Jesus for fasting. Why he's not fasting? They're accusing Jesus for Sabbath. And they were going even worse. They're accusing Jesus that the demon, demon is in himself. Which is like, uh, uh, the, uh, we are coming to that story about the, the blasphemy, of, uh, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And it's, uh, this is the, the verse uh, 22, uh, chapter 3. And he said, the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem, they came to investigate him up. He is possessed with a Beelzebub by the prince of demons. He is driving out the demons. So Jesus called them over him, and he being, began to speak to, to them in parables. These religious people, they couldn't explain how Jesus is doing miracles, how Jesus is taking care of the demons out. And they were so blinded by their religion. They wanted to kill him. Uh, in, a, in, a, in a few verses earlier, the Pharisees, when he said he's the Lord of the Sabbath, the Pharisees and Herodians, the followers of Herod, they plot together. They usually they didn't cooperate because they hate each other. But because of Jesus, to kill him, they start to work together. And now they said that Beelzebub is the prince of demon in, uh, in, by, in himself, and with that power he's doing healings. Beelzebub is mentioning only time in the Bible in 2 Kings, in chapter 1, uh, Baal Zebub, there was uh, the, the god of Philistines in the city of Akron. But also, I was reading yesterday, there was also the, 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 the meaning means the guy of the flies. <laughs> and it was a pictured as a, as, a, as a prince of demons. Basically, these people didn't know how, they were so blinded that they, instead of seeing that what God is doing, what Messiah is doing, they said, this is not God. This is the demon. This is the, he's doing things with the demons. And then Jesus is giving them logical explanation. He said, how the kingdom of Satan can survive if, if, if I'm casting demons out? And if somebody stronger than this demon is coming there, do you think that I'm not the God? And, uh, and you, what you're accusing me is false? And then he said, this blasphemy, uh, he said, uh, uh, truly I tell you people can be forgiven for all sins and every slander they utter, but whoever bless them against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. They're guilty of eternal sin. We know that God can forgive every sin. And, uh, and here, uh, sometimes there is a lot of debates, what is this uh, sin against the Holy Spirit? But in the context of this, if somebody is so blinded, so darkened in heart that they, 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 they can see what God is doing and they call that this is the demon, this is the Satan, and they are pointing that very strongly that it's very hard for them to come back to understand who is Jesus, who is God. Uh, I never saw in Serbia, no, like that somebody say, people don't believe, they said we don't believe in this, this is stupid, but, but these people here, they wanted to destroy Jesus by attacking him and say instead of, hey, he was the son of God, doing a lot of miracles, good message, they, they call him, uh, the demon is in you. And Jesus said, this sin cannot be forgiven. So Christ came here to bring a new wine in wineskins. Therefore, there is no condemnation for do those who are in Christ Jesus. Galatians 5 Paul, Apostle Paul, he said, it's a freedom that Christ has set us free. We are free from regulations. We are free from the Old Testament law. We, because we are now in Christ, we have relationship with him. For uh, you have been called to live in a freedom, my brothers and sisters. But don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, it's a new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. That is the point what Jesus wanted to, to make to these religious people, to everyone. I'm creating something new. 
It's a new relationship based on my righteousness. Amen? And I think I want to encourage you and all of us to trust Christ, to develop our personal relationship with Him, and, uh, and, uh, and to understand that God is creating something new. When we are connected with Christ through faith, through repentance, through accepting the gospel, God is creating something new. St. Augustine said, uh, one sentence he said, in main things we have unity. In non-main things we have a tolerance in everything love. Sometimes these uh, not important things, some man-made regulations, if they became central, then we are in a problem. Then we are accusing people. Then we are not joyful to live uh, a joyful Christian life despite the hardships and problems. Christ is a doctor who can bring a cure. Do you need a cure? Christ is a bringing a new wine in new wineskins. Do you need a new relationship? Fresh start with Christ this morning. And the third thing, Christ is creating a, a new family. We can see from the text that his family thought that Christ is crazy. <laughs> they came and, and the, the text say, he said, they thought he's out of his mind. Uh, many, even the, his family members thought he's religious fanatic. When you became a Christian, did anybody tell you you're a religious fanatic? <laughs> if not, soon and later, some people will tell you <laughs> that you're a religious fanatic. Can you, when you became a Christian, when you're talking to some people, say, hey, I, I, I follow Christ. I don't want to live anymore like the people say, are you, are you crazy? And his brothers didn't believe as well in John chapter 7, 5. And uh, we can see that family came to take him home to say, well, hey, Jesus, okay, you study theology, but this is too much. This is too much. But Jesus, from the verse 13 to 19, he's calling his apostles to himself. And he's creating a new team. He's creating a new family. He's calling them to him. The name church in Greek language is ecclesia, called out. Usually in those times, the, the students choose the teacher and then teacher approve them, or rabbi. But here rabbi choose the, the, the students. Uh, and that is this, uh, Jesus called them in, a, in a, his presence. This is a mystical union with Christ. Church is corporate thing. It's not individual thing. Jesus called apostles to join him, but immediately he gave them authority and sent them out. His invitation calling come to me is immediately go as well. <laughs> so Christ didn't start a new family in the church just that we can be here together by ourselves. But he's calling us not to come only, but also to go. To go into the world and preach and live the gospel of Jesus Christ. Twelve apostles is a symbol of twelve tribes of Israel. Basically, for the readers, he said, I am creating a new, new Israel. And Jesus, uh, uh, while he was teaching in the verse 31 to 35, they asked, hey, your family is here. He said, who is my family? Everyone who, ob who is obedient to the will of God is my brother, my sister, my mother. This is my family. So Christ is creating a new family. You can enter the God's family by faith and repentance uh, to G in Jesus Christ, but also be obedient for, for, his, uh, for his will. Let's finish. We have a few reactions in this text. First reactions, we have uh, Matthew start to follow Jesus. Many came uh, far away just to see Jesus as a miracle person. Some wanted to eliminate Jesus. His family thought he's crazy. Some has a false accusation to him that he, he possessed a demon. What is our reaction and respond on Jesus' invitation this morning? Who is Jesus for you? And what will be your response if he call you, follow me? I will underline these three points. Christ is a doctor who can be, bring you the cure, the spiritual sickness, is our sins. Bible say that all of us we are sinful, that all of us we are short of the glory of God, that all of us we have sinned, and that all of us, if we trust Jesus and accept his diagnosis and we understand that we cannot help each other ourselves 
and that we need him as a savior, he can change us, he can give us a new hope, life, meaning, and you can understand your life purpose. Matthew did it. You can did do as well. Receive the help through Christ. Christ died on the cross for you, your sins and my sins. He rose from the death to give us eternal life. He is the only doctor who can heal you. He has the only vaccine who can give solution for our spiritual virus that all of us have in ourselves. Christ is bringing a new wine in new wineskins. Following him is based on the act of his love. It's about relationship, not man-made regulations, how to reach God with our efforts. Sometimes when we are preaching gospel, people cannot accept that. Say, I cannot accept the gift. Can I add something? No, you cannot add. That's not the gospel anymore. It's in our prideful nature, we cannot receive gift. We cannot understand that we cannot do anything. You cannot fit Jesus in the old system. He gave you the new system. You are free and now you have a Holy Spirit that you can joyfully live Christian life for Him. That is the good news. You don't need to be legalistic. You live in relationship with Him. You love Him and you love people around yourself. And the third thing, Christ is creating a new family. Come and go. <laughs> This morning we came, after the service we will go next week. The church is the hope of this world. Be obedient to God's will. Be part of God's family, wherever you are. Be active part of the local church. Serve with your talents and gifts that the Christ body can be mature. Let's stand up and we will pray. It's a very rich text. And I just want to invite uh, uh, worship leaders to come in the front and to, to, to lead us in the last song. But uh, think about these three important things. Maybe the society and the good religious people told you, you're the lost case. You're not lost case for God. If you admit and say, I need a doctor, I need a cure, Jesus will forgive your sins. Jesus will change your life. He came for sinners, and all of us are sinners. That is the good news. Approach to him in a prayer this morning and ask him, say, Christ, you are the doctor, heal me spiritually. Forgive my sins. Give me restoration. Uh, he can heal you also physically, and uh, jo Roger talked that uh, last, uh, last Sunday. But also Christ is creating some new, new wine in new wine skin. Sometimes Christian people, are slaves of some made-made regulations and rules. And we don't have a joy. We're accusing each other. And maybe this Sunday God wants to restore uh, his relationship with you to create something new. If you're in Christ, you're a new creation. You don't depend on the man-made regulation. And the third thing, Christ created the family. We are family. Sometimes we cannot choose the family. <laughs> Uh, Christ is inviting you to join the church. Baptism is important. But also being a part of the church is not just an isolated club. As we come to Christ by his invitation, we also are calling by him to go. To go. This world needs the doctor who can cure. Let's pray and be in a silence. And if you want to talk after the service and to pray with us, we are open here in the front to, to talk with you. This is this Jesus. He, he is not in any box. This is amazing, fascinating Jesus. He is the Lord of everything. But he loves everyone. And he is giving us opportunity to live dynamic, joyful relationship with him. He's giving us family to support each other, to encourage each other. We are not alone. We are part of the family. We came to him, but we are also ready to, to go. Let's be in the silence and then uh, respond to God's, to Jesus' invitation. He's calling you to follow him. He's calling you to, to focus on him, to experience 
this new dynamic relationship. He's calling you to join the brothers and sisters to be active member of the local church. God, thank you for the Gospel of Mark. Thank you that uh, this is the true picture of who Jesus is. Thank you that you loves us and that you are there is no lost case. Thank you that you love Matthew and his friends. God send us around. Help us to love everyone, not to put people in boxes. Help us, God, to show your love in actions and words to the people who are searching for the doctor who can only cure them. Heavenly Father, we are praying that if there is anybody in, in this church this morning that you will transform, forgive, change their lives only through faith in you. You came because of sinners, not because of righteous one. You came because of the people who are desperate and who needs help and salvation. Help us, God, to accept your offer. Help us, God, and forgive us when we are, are focusing more on made-made regulations, rather the, your scriptures and the essence. And Lord, help us that, um, that our relationship with you and view about ministry can be refreshed that we can put a new wine in the new wineskins, not to put something old into the new. It's not working. And help us, Father, that we can understand that we are part of your family. We are your children. You are our Father. And help us to contribute to the God's family. Uh, help us that we can experience fellowship, but also that we can carry the burdens of each other, but also that we can be a light and salt in Belgrade, in Serbia, wherever we go. Once again, thank you for this fascinating Jesus, for wonderful gospel, for wonderful gift from you, for us humans. We are thankful for that and praying this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.